Welcome to Construction Management 329 Construction Equipment. This is a new class that has been added to the core curriculum and it's going to be optional for those of you who have not started uh, by fall 2012, which means pretty much everyone. So uh, let's see what are we going to learn in this course. The course objectives or the topics to be covered, we're going to talk about what's the role of construction equipment, what are the job site conditions that are leading or affecting the equipment selection. We're going to learn about equipment production rates, which is how many units can they produce per a unit of time or the productivity. We're going to learn about maintenance management, what kind of maintenance does this equipment need. We're going to learn about equipment economics and the decision whether to buy, lease or rent equipment. And hopefully by the end of the course you're going to achieve these course outcomes. So you're going to understand the performance characteristics of major pieces of equipment commonly used in the construction industry, whether it's in earth moving, in concrete, in any other operation on site. You're going to be able to match equipment selection with the job site conditions. So for which type of sh job site conditions should we select what type of equipment? You're going to be able to develop an equipment system including major pieces of equipment and ancillary items to satisfy construction production requirements. So once we know what's the volume of work to be done, what's the amount of time that we have, what are the job conditions, we're going to select what's the most suitable piece of equipment to reach these objectives. Be able to calculate the production rates for the studied equipment. So once we start learning, for example, about bulldozer or loaders or tower cranes, we need to calculate what's the cycle time and what's the production time to be able to determine its productivity and the best use of that piece of equipment. We're also going to learn about uh, understanding uh, rolling resistance, grade resistance, and total resistance as they affect equipment speed, cycle times, and overall production especially equipment that's going to be moving or rolling on the ground, especially in construction sites, we're going to have these different types of resistance that the equipment has to overcome, otherwise it's not going to be able to work, so we need to learn about these. Know what equipment performance curves are, as we're going to see later in the course. Each piece of equipment comes with its own user's manual. That includes performance curves that show how to estimate and how to operate according to the best performance to achieve the best performance of the equipment and we're going to learn and understand how to calculate the fixed cycle times the variable cycle times and the total cycle times and uh, how they affect the production rates and costs because basically if I know that the cycle time of this piece of equipment to perform one cycle is let's say three minutes then it's going to achieve assuming that we're working 60 minutes per hour which might not be true as we're going to learn later about efficiency so it's going to have 20 cycles per hour knowing the capacity per cycle that's going to enable us to, to estimate the total production per hour and therefore calculate the equipment needs understand the basic concepts of equipment maintenance so we're going to get a little bit into equipment costing and how to calculate the to estimate the cost of maintenance and so on and so forth and understand the economics of buying, leasing, and replacing equipment, and the associated factors of depreciation and other owning and operational costs. All of these are going to be included in this course. So what about grading? How are you going to be graded? Well, refer to the syllabus, which is already available online, and we're going to be discussing it in class. Please go ahead and read it first, and if you have any questions, I'll be glad to address these. So I'd like always, always to start any of my classes with an introduction about project management and where does that particular class fit within the big spectrum of project management. So project management is the art and science of delivering projects within the set parameters to satisfy the needs of the end user, the client, the owner, or the user of the project. It incorporates the management of several separate yet interrelated functions. So what are these functions that a project manager needs to master. Currently, if I ask 10 of you what's sh what should be managed in a construction project, probably 9 out of the 10 are going to respond with this. Time, cost, and quality. These used to be called the triple constraint. Any project has to be done within the available time, under budget or within the budget, 
and it has to meet at least to meet the minimum quality requirements as specified in the project specifications but now if we ask what really needs to be managed this is basically your job as a project manager you have to manage all of these areas which are the scope of the project because again the scope of the project might change from time to time through what we know as the scope creep which is an incremental change slow and incremental change in this uh, in the project scope by the end of the project you might end up with something that's totally different from what you started with time we need to manage time for the project and that's what you learn about in the scheduling class how to finish the project within the allocated period of time and how to schedule the different activities the sequence how to estimate the resources needed for these activities and so on cost of course very much related to time and scope because again if it's not achievable within the available budget then we should not bid on that project quality of course if it does not meet the quality standards specified by the client the client is not going to accept the project and will have to redo the work which is going to affect time cost and scope risk there's no project without risk we acknowledge that there's always risk in the project so the issue is how are we going to deal with this risk there are different strategies different approaches to risk management there are different calculations involved in risk management whether it's qualitative management or quantitative management is that risk high medium or low what's the probability of that risk occurring what's the impact if that risk occurs and how are we going to deal with it are we going to insure it are we going to mitigate it are we going to ignore it and so on and so forth and this is a course by itself that's called risk management you might discuss that a little bit in construction management 415 communication everything that you do on a daily basis is related to communication you're going to attend meetings you're going to write emails you're going to respond to phone calls you're going to have uh, conference calls you're going to write memos you're going to read the contract you're going to comment on that contract you're going to review the drawings you're going to modify the drawings all of these are different modes of communication so again you must know about communication management how to manage these different modes of communication what's considered a pull communication was considered a push communication and so on again this is something that might be touched upon in uh, construction management the, the class called construction management procurement everything that we do in construction projects is related to contracts so we have a contract with the client if I'm the general contractor I have a contract with the client I, ha I might have a contract with the construction manager I'm going to have a contract with my subcontractors or several contracts with the subcontractors. I'm going to have several contracts with my suppliers, etc. So how are we going to write these contracts? How are we, going, are we going to manage or administer these contracts in a way that minimizes the probability of any claims or any disputes that might arise in the project that might threaten the whole completion of the project? And human resources. Again, we are dealing with both capital assets like equipment, for example, and we're dealing with human resources, the personnel who are going to develop this project for us. So how to form teams, how to recruit these teams, how to motivate these teams, how to uh, give them a common way of looking at the project and synergize them, how to have incentives for that team, and in case of uh, bad performance, how are we going to penalize the team members and so on and so forth. Now these are basically eight areas of construction management or project management I should say. All of these should be integrated together into a comprehensive project management plan and that's going to be done through integration management. Now this is the minimum that a project management manager needs to master but for partic particularly for construction management we're going to add three additional areas and these are safety management because again our construction sites unfortunately so far are still relatively unsafe we have accidents we have injuries unfortunately unfortunately we also have fatalities from time to time so how to have a safe environment within which we can accomplish this accomplish this project environment this is the new trend right now everyone's talking about sustainability everyone's gonna is talking about green systems and so on and so forth how can we minimize our impact on the environment or even leave the environment in a better condition than before developing the project when we talk about brown fields areas where that they have been contaminated for example how are we going to remediate these fields 
and develop the project so that it, it can improve the environment surrounding it. And finally, claims. This is a very common thing in construction projects. And claims by themselves are not bad, by the way. So, for example, at the end of the month, the contractor is going to send to the owner a payment requisition or a payment request. This is a claim. The contractor claims that I have done this and that, and according to the contract, I need to get paid. So, a claim by itself is not bad. If there's a disagreement about the claim, however, it might arise into a dispute, and this is what we're trying to avoid. So, claims management deals also with dispute management, talking about alternative dispute met resolution methods, and how can we bring the different parties to a common understanding of the project to minimize the possibility of uh, disputes occurring. So, as you can see, this is pretty much a comprehensive construction management curriculum dealing with each one of these topics or combining some of them. Basically, what you're going to be doing in your capstone class, you're going to integrate all of these into one comprehensive project management plan. So now, let's focus on our class, equipment. Why manage equipment? Well, in construction projects, especially heavy commercial and civil projects, the use of equipment is intensive. We know that there are some projects that are um, labor intensive, there are some projects that are material intensive, there are some projects that are equipment intensive. So especially heavy commercial and civil projects are equipment intensive, especially on the side of lifting equipment and earth moving equipment. Poor equipment management as a very important aspect in the project. Poor equipment management results in equipment condition deterioration, so you lose the service life of the equipment, you don't get the best utilization of that equipment. Loss of productivity, instead of achieving so many, let's say, cubic yards per hour or number of cycles per hour, you do not achieve that goal. Safety risks, as we're going to see later on when we address equipment safety and how to deal with equipment. If you're working with a crane, for example, close to power lines, what are the precautions that you have to take into consideration? And ultimately, any of these or all of these combined are going to result in financial losses. So that all these are all signs of poor equipment management. So knowing how to manage the equipment hopefully is going to make us avoid falling into the pitfalls of poor uh, equipment management. What does equipment management involve? It, in, uh, it includes equipment planning. So what type of equipment to use like the size, capacity, production rate, cost, schedule of acquisition and utilization. When do I need to bring that equipment to site? When do I need to rent that equipment or to lease it? Mixing and matching of different types of equipment to achieve optimum performance and productivity. For that particular batch plant, how many transit mixers am I going to need? And for these transit mixers to uh, achieve optimum productivity, how many tower cranes am I going to need? How many buckets within the tower crane? And so on. Decisions on equipment purchasing versus renting or leasing. When would it be better to purchase the equipment? and when it would, would it be better to just rent it or lease it for a medium term. It also includes equipment monitoring. So collecting actual data about equipment cycle times, productivity and production rates, as well as cost calculations. In our initial plan, we had some targets, we had some goals. What we need to ensure during project execution is, are we achieving these goals or not? We estimate that this equipment is going to have a certain cycle time. Is that the actual cycle time that we're getting from that piece of equipment? So planning is the first step into management. The second step is monitoring, which is collecting actual data. And the third step is control. Finally, equipment control, which is comparing the actual performance to the planned rates and adjusting the plans accordingly. From time to time, we're going to find that we have some deviations or some discrepancies or some variances. So we need to adjust our plan based on the actual performance and know exactly what are the reasons for this variance so that we do not repeat the same mistake for future projects. And this uh, control part closes the feedback loop and results in a new cycle of planning. So based on my control, there's going to be a new decision for the new projects or for the remaining part of that particular project. In conclusion, Equipment are a great resource that can make or break a project, especially the ones that are equipment intensive. The project manager, although not necessarily a mechanical engineer, is responsible for the proper selection, utilization, and maintenance of the equipment. As a project manager, you control the whole site. 
and that's basically it for uh, this class i hope you enjoyed learning about the basics of construction equipment and i'll meet you in the next class